Hello, and welcome to our Women's Walk with Christ blog, Speaking Life. My name is Margaret Hilton, and this is my co-host, Kim Turner. Hello, everyone, and happy March to you. It's hard to believe we're already in the third month of 2021. Yes. Where does the time go? I don't know. Exactly sure. (laughs) I know, right? Like we blink, and all of a sudden, here we are. That's okay. Not exactly sure that we're almost at the year anniversary of when the pandemic really first started get like to get bad. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw that someone posted on Facebook a couple of days ago about that to watch your memory feeds, that it's kind of triggering for people. And I was like, wow, I hadn't really thought about that, you know, because I mean, part of my life changed, but my work life didn't really change. I still went into the office every day and So it didn't affect me quite as much as some people. So I I can imagine that'll be triggering for some people. Yeah. It's been a long year. (laughs) It'll be interesting to see what that feels like on the day. I remember that day a year ago. (laughs) (laughs) And we'd like to forget that day sometimes. (laughs) So we do have a very special guest for you today. Uh, Before we get to the guest, though, I did want to give a shout out to my beautiful co-host. I got the mail the other day, and in the mail was this beautiful bracelet. And I don't know if you can see it, but it says, Speak Life. Yay! So we're twins. So, oh yes, you can see yours really well. So we both have these bracelets, and it was just... You can tell the story of how you found them, but they're just absolutely perfect. Listen, it's the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I was wandering through Mardell's and up at the counter, I looked over and I was like, what does that say? (laughs) Said, speak life. And I was like, I have to have, and there was only two. Oh, perfect. I know. I'm like, these are mine. (laughs) I will take these, please. He knew well, you needed these because this is a great reminder of what we're doing. It is the perfect present, and it was such a fun surprise to receive in the mail. So thank you so much, my friend. You're very welcome. I'm glad you enjoy it. I love it. <laughs> Good. So now on to the guest, and will you please introduce our guest? Yes, I am so excited. We have a wonderful guest today who I have known since the beginning of my journey in Women's Walk with Christ. Um, She did not do her bridge with me, but I definitely have been in her circle since. And it is Janet Schott. She is definitely a gift that was given to me by God. Um, We share a lot in common, and she is probably one of the wisest women I know. She is an incredible mother and wife and sister. And here she is, our beautiful friend and concert buddy, Janet Schott. Hi, Janet. Hi. <laughs> Hello, friends. Margaret. Hello, friends. <laughs> How are you? you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Miss Margaret, I have missed your face. I have missed you too. (laughs) And I have missed our concerts. We were just talking about that in our prepping that you are one of our beloved concert sisters and later. So, so be thinking, I'm going to ask you what your favorite concert memory is. And you know, you better not say when I went backstage and met the band, because I wasn't (laughs) at that concert. So that can't be your favorite. Lecrae, Lecrae. (laughs) Not Lecrae either. <laughs> You've never met him. Just to be clear. I have You pictures. need to believe, Margaret. You need to believe. <laughs> For all of our listeners out there, these two gals <laughs> that they have met Lecrae and they took a picture of him holding up one finger. Turns out wasn't Lecrae. <laughs> so they don't know. I know. So don't be fooled. <laughs> oh, Listen, he could fun. be if he wanted to be. <laughs> it was all right. I was there. <laughs> you were not. You were at home. I took the picture. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was a stranger. Were you were in the stands and we came back and we're like, look who we met. <laughs> no. Oh, I, that's right. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> Don't even be deceived. <laughs> Anyways, back on okay. track. 
<laughs> so on with our show. <laughs> if you are going you? to be able to do that a lot, this show with the two no, of yes. your shenanigans. <laughs> We are focused and in mission. We yes. are ready to go. <laughs> okay, so Janet, if you can share with us your mission statement and when you did your weekend. Okay, uh, my weekend was January 2012. And my mission statement is, as a holy, grace-filled woman walking with Christ, I co-create a world of healing, truth, and integrity through courage, strength, compassion, and unconditional love for myself and all of God's children. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. It's just right for you. Thank you. And for you, for your mission statement, has it changed since your weekend? Yeah, a few words have changed. Um, I think after I learned more about Women's Walk, I added integrity because that's really important to me. And um, so I wanted that word in there because I strive to be, you know, to have integrity as much as I can. And then in the last few months, God has been putting holy on my heart to change the first part as a holy, grace-filled woman. So because he also calls us to holiness, which means to be set apart for God. So that's what I'm trying to strive to be every day. And I fail, <laughs> but I want to be holy. That's what I long to be, you know, just holy in his eyes and, and that the world would see him through me. That's what I want. So. So that's how it's changed. But I love my mission statement. It gives me purpose. Mm -hmm. When I fall mm -hmm. off track, I go back to it. You know, I try to repeat it as much as I can. Um, it's just, it's who I am, I believe. It's the words God gave me. So, and my sisters have given me those too. So mm -hmm. I would believe that it is all true and you should add it. <laughs> and I have definitely <laughs> been witness to unconditional love for sure, that you just love unconditionally whoever you come encounter with. Thank you. <laughs> so how, tell us how God has changed your life through Women's Walk. Oh, <laughs> it'd be hard to put it in words. You know, it's um, going on my weekend, I was so broken and I, um, I wasn't sure that I wanted to go. I was very nervous to go and I just told God, if I'm supposed to go, let me know, you know, show me that I'm supposed to go. So I was on the waiting list and then I got the call that, you know, you're, you're coming. So I just trusted and I went and with a really open heart and open mind. Um, and he did amazing things because I think the main thing I got from it was my value because going in there, I didn't feel like I had value. I felt like I was a mistake my whole life. Um, just to know that I was loved and accepted by him, no matter what my wounds were um, and loved and accepted by my sisters, just so much love that I got from all of them. And um, often on the weekends, I sit around at the end and I look around at all the women and I'm just amazed that God has put me in this place with all these beautiful women that, that love unconditionally and, you know, that, that don't judge me for anything that I've done or been through or, um, but yeah, he's given me a purpose and just to know that I'm loved by him and accepted has made all the difference in the world for me. So, um, best thing I've ever done. So, <laughs> and just being able to empty out all those wounds that I carried for so long, you know, and getting the tools that we got from the weekend and continue to get. So, so many ways. <laughs> well, we're glad you listened. <laughs> Me too, because, yeah, if I wouldn't have, I don't know where I would be, honestly. Right. So. And I, I think mean, you've told me before you went up by yourself, <laughs> right? You went up just by yourself, didn't know anybody. I did. I didn't know a soul. So that was hard, you know, and yeah. scary yeah. going in and very emotional coming back. So, but yeah, it was a great thing. So, and it still continues to be, so very grateful for it. Well, and what a powerful sign, like to be on the wait list and then to get the call, like you're on, like that was from God, like you're going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. And you can knock yourself out of it on the way up by yourself. You know, that'd have been easy to do. Yeah. Right? I, I didn't 
try. I just knew I knew I needed it and I was willing to try whatever I was going to do, whatever it took to just do it, you know? So. Wow. Who but, told yeah. you about it? How did you know about it? Um, I was seeing a counselor at the time and um, he's actually a marked man. And he, I had gone through a lot of counseling and we were to the point of, okay, now what? And he said, I think this would be really good for you. And so I trusted that and signed Thank up you. and Miss Daisy Hazelton called me and said, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> do you want it or not? I said, yeah, I do. So I love that. It's so awesome. <laughs> so you two were not on the same weekend? No. She's January, I was June. Oh. But we, um, our two bridges merged or if it was a journey back then, I don't remember what they called it. And it was the eight week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I did my eight week and then got in a spirit circle and then she did hers and then they decided to merge. And thank you, Jesus, for that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So I didn't you realize know. this. But what? you have a little people bit People think we've known each other forever, but, you know, <laughs> we haven't. You have more seniority than Kim does. I didn't realize that. Well, I am older. <laughs> She'll tell you that. <laughs> I didn't By a couple of years. <laughs> Just a little bit older. <laughs> yeah. Still older. <laughs> <laughs> Wiser. Always. Oh. Women's walk experience. <laughs> and so on to our next question, Margaret. <laughs> She is wiser. I've told her that. She's far oh, more. I don't know. About that. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> okay. Our next question, which leads into that is, why is it important for you to go to Spirit Circle? Well, it's accountability. It's all of the agreements that we talk about. Um, and it's just a safe place. It's a place like no other, you know, where you you're loved and accepted and have the support of your sisters to be able to do your work. Um, There's so much judgment out in the world that I just don't feel judged there. You know, I feel like I can be who I am and we hold each other up even when we're not in circle. It's that constant communication of, you know, prayer requests or we celebrate, you know, great things that are happening in our family's lives. It's just such a beautiful connection that, I don't have with my own sisters. So another thing to just be so grateful for. I just, you know, love all of you. You're in my spirit circle, Cam. <laughs> How weird is that? <laughs> really? I didn't know. <laughs> yes, you hold us accountable and we've been able to grow. And, and for us, I know we've said this, we share a lot of commonalities in our lives. And so for Jane and then I, we've been able to help each other through those peaks and valleys just in our different yeah. situations, especially with our kids. So he yeah. definitely knew exactly what he was doing. And I think <laughs> Martha, you could probably speak to that for your spirit circles. Like, it's amazing how so many things you have in common with each other, you know, like he knows exactly who we need in our circles. Yeah, and I love that. You know, it amazes me how much not just Jane and I, but even the other ladies in our circles have in common, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's amazing. Well, and I think you've said it before, Kim, you know, there's nights you don't feel like going, but at the end of the night, you're so glad you did because either you needed something or you were there for somebody else to support them in their work. Um, and it's also, you know, always said one woman does work. We all do work. And that's so true, yeah. you know? So true. Like they might touch on something that you didn't even know was bothering you. So it's a great thing. It is. Very it's great thing for it. I have been witness from the outside in on your circle, like not attending, but watching your sisterhood, like on the weekends and stuff. And like a stalker, so, not like a stalker, like a beautiful <laughs> observer. Thank you very much. But I have watched your sisterhood from afar in a non-stalkerish way. And it is just beautiful. And the way that you guys communicate and um, you have something really special. So I, I totally agree. God knew what he was doing when he put you gals yeah. together. 
<laughs> he did, even he though did. we can tell the story that I was not that high <laughs> when I first met her. Must oh. we tell that story? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I don't think it's funny. I thought you two were like this from the beginning. I loved her, Margaret, right away. The minute she spoke. <laughs> her, on the other hand. Go Janet, ahead, Kim. Tell the story. Margaret can agree with Janet is a lot more serious than probably myself. <laughs> and so when I first met her, I got in the car with my mom. And we're driving away and I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that Janet. She's pretty serious. <laughs> She's kind of stoic. <laughs> but you can't judge a book by its cover. And then by our right. next meeting, bing, there it went. <laughs> so she just had to peel back some of your layers. Right? That's right. And I was still going through stuff, you know. She doesn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were healed. <laughs> No, never, honey. <laughs> Not Wait, this side of heaven. Do? Janet, What's when that? you first met Kim, you loved her right away. I did, yeah, instantly. I liked her personality. She's she's a joy bubble, you know. I needed some joy in my life, <laughs> and it was her. She was very serious. <laughs> yeah, I laugh a lot more now, too. Interesting. <laughs> she's kind of silly. <laughs> Thank you. She's a little bit silly. Yeah. A bit, yeah. She's a lot of work too, right, Margaret? <laughs> Where's your passport? Margaret knows. Where's your phone? I have a pen. I can write it down. <laughs> For those of you who have never traveled with Kim, this is something that Janet and I commiserate about. When you travel with Kim, you have to make sure. Where's your phone? Where's your passport? Do you have all of your stuff with you? Because yes. sometimes it doesn't always make it to your destination. <laughs> Oh, I got a lot going on up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good <laughs> time. Okay. So moving on to our next uh, question. What is one of the most impactful things a wise woman or another sister has told you? Well, there's been a lot of things, of course. Um, after a lot of, you know, I've done a few testimonials, so. That's always been very powerful, um, mm -hmm. speaking with wise women after that. But the one that stands out the most for me is on my weekend. Um, Jean Simmons, our lovely Jean Simmons, <laughs> was the first wise woman I went to. Mm -hmm. And she just held me and I cried and I felt so much love from her. Um, I lost my mom many years ago. And so it felt like a mother's love to me. In mm -hmm. fact, I call her my spiritual mom because mm -hmm. that, that's what she is for me. Um, but just being held by her and, and loved. And then she told me, you know, the bridge or journey, like I said, I can't remember what we called it back then. She goes, it's going to be at my house and I want you to come, you know? <laughs> and it was like, so great. Just knowing that, um, you know, I had been invited by her and that it could continue. I didn't have to, that didn't have to be the end. And just the love I felt from her was just so, so wonderful. So she went on to do, um, my bridge and then she did Kim's and so then we all merged as a circle and then she stayed with us another wonderful thing so we still have Jean with us I miss her dearly too because of the stupid COVID stuff but um but yeah that was my best wise woman moment because it was just so powerful so much love from her you know so she is incredibly wise <clears throat> pretty great she I know you're watching, Jane. We love you. <laughs> the ambassador of She's a follower, I know, of this show. <laughs> she is, and she is the ambassador of peace. She, yes. I mean, you're just around her and you just feel like your whole body just is calm and peaceful. And yes. we love to watch her at concerts. She just makes <laughs> her laugh. She's just so funny. I love that about her. She's just, yeah. she's, she's such pretty a great. Yes. She is. <laughs> okay, next question. What are some of your daily or weekly spiritual practices? Well, daily, I um, spend about 30 minutes each morning um, reading devotionals, mostly, you know, like Jesus Calling. Um, and I have a few other devotionals, but 
I struggle with being still and just listening sometimes, but when I do, it's so powerful that I, I have like so many journals in my house that <laughs> I just write stuff in that, and it'll be stuff that God tells me or just how I'm feeling. Um, and I love to look back on those and just see how he's worked in my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the times when I've been in despair that he's pulled me out and in times of joy that I've been able to, you know, experience with him and, and times where he'll just take me to another place. Um, my favorite place to go with him is to a garden. Mm-hmm. It always says that we meet in a garden. So, and of course, Kim, there's a waterfall. <laughs> I, I knew it. <laughs> It has to be a waterfall. So I just love that. And we sit on a bench and, you know, he holds me and we talk. And Mm. when I can go to that place, that's just so beautiful. And like I said, I journal about it so that I can look back on it. Um, And I also just love to walk. And so sometimes that's a prayer for me. Like I'll put in my, my Christian music, not the heavy stuff, not the Toby Mac. (laughs) I put in the mellow stuff. <laughs> no, I have a, I have a playlist called healing and it's all the songs that remind me of my healing and, mm. and all of that. So I'll, I'll walk and just listen to those songs and, and sometimes be able to be swept away, even, you know, out taking a walk just to a place with him or, or picture myself dancing with him. It's just some beautiful moments he gives me when I can, really go there. So, um, but yeah, my morning has to start with him or it, it doesn't go well. So, (laughs) and if I, if I wait till later in the day, it doesn't happen. And then it just, I just don't feel peaceful if I don't get that time. So, Mm -hmm. so those are the things I like to do. So those are beautiful. Do you have some, uh, Francesca on that playlist of yours? Oh, yes. (laughs) Francesca. You know, I know all the good (laughs) <laughs> I know all the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> There's not one Toby Mac on that playlist. Not one. No, there are. <laughs> oh, yeah. There Maybe are a few. More mellow stuff. <laughs> yeah, like his 21 years. Him on this show one of these times. Yeah, we're going to have him on, right? Yeah. I'll be a co-host. I'll be a co-host. Maybe I'll we'll ask, ask him next time we're back. When we talk to Lecrae, we'll see if he can bring us on the show. <laughs> If yeah, they're tight. The plan, I, it's never going to happen. We need a new plan. <laughs> I've heard they're buddies, so we'll get in on that. <laughs> we'll let you come, <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> with Lecrae. New plan. <laughs> oh, Margaret. <laughs> I would be a hot mess express if we had Toby Mac on the vlog. I would not be able to keep myself <laughs> close. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be speaking any life. <laughs> it would just, but wouldn't he love the name of your vlog? Like he would think that's so cool that you oh, named it after his song. I, don't know yeah. it but I wouldn't be I'm able not- to tell him the origin or how it came about or anything. Cause I would just be fangirling it out. <laughs> just talk. I think I'm going to write him and let him know about this vlog. <laughs> oh. you don't, me I have his address. <laughs> He might have him on speed dial. (laughs) (laughs) No, he would think it's cool. So he would, right? Because we're cool. I know. (laughs) Probably so. Well, someday. (laughs) Nothing is impossible with God. I believe that. I (laughs) believe that. (laughs) I do too. (laughs) Okay. Speaking of God. Our Mm. next question for you is fill in this statement. God is, who is God to you? Well, the first word that comes to mind is everything Mm. because he is everything to me. Um, At a very young age, I, I feel like he's been there, you know, just protecting me, guiding me. Um, Times I ran away from him. He never gave up on me. Um, So he's my protector. He's, there's just so many words. He's, you know, just my father. Um, I'm drawing a blank for the words right now, but I just can't put it into words because he just means so much to me. And I, 
I feel my faith just continuing to grow as I get older. Um, my daughter, you know, is a mom of two young kids and she struggles with prayer life and all of that. And I said, you know, I remember being there too, but as your kids get older and stuff and you have more time and there's times I feel selfish because I take that prayer time and I go in my room and I shut the door and I go on my walks, but that's what I need. And um, so it's just so important to me to have that relationship with him and to have it continue to flourish. And it didn't until I got rid of some of that junk on the weekend, you know, mm -hmm. he was always there and it was, you know, but I felt like a distance kind of, and until I emptied out some of that, he couldn't really get in as much as I think he wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's more to come. Like he just wants, he wants more of me and I want more of him. And um, again, just everything, like just so many, so many different ways I could describe him, but um and he's never left me. He's, he's always been there. And I, I tell my kids, you know, he's the one that you can always count on because the world will let you down. I'm going to let you down, but he never will. So, um, so that's just really, you know, just gives me peace to know that he's going to be there no matter what comes so that I can handle anything just because I know that. So that's awesome. <laughs> and you believe that like I I know I know you believe that I do yeah I do yeah and you know before women's walk people would tell me oh you're his child he loves you you know and it would be like yeah I heard it but I didn't feel it but now I feel it and I know it you know I know it for sure so um that's what women's walk has done for me it's opened up my heart and my mind and allowed that to come in because there was too much stuff blocking it. So. Oh. Well, it's like you said, you had to empty that out to make room for all of the good that he has, you know, and if your cup is so yeah. full that it's spilling over, you don't get any of it. It just is running on the ground or wherever. And yeah. so you get, you lose all that. Because I got rid of a lot of that. I was able to have joy because I never really let myself be joyful before. Mm -hmm. I always felt like you had to either be sad or joyful. And I've learned that they both can mix, like it can intermingle, you know, and, and I don't have to be like super down or super up. I can be in between and I can feel, I can cry one minute and laugh the next and it's okay. So, and you've brought me a lot of joy, both of you <laughs> and Toby Mac. <laughs> Is this the Toby Mac show? <laughs> I'm telling Sorry, you. People are going to be sick of us. <laughs> That's all they talked about. Toby Mac. <laughs> oh, no, we love Toby. <laughs> we I think love they know them. that. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to meet them, and we are all going to be in awe. <laughs> When you're yes. talking about your cup and emptying out, I got the visual that we do on the weekend. And I know it's been a long time. And if you haven't staffed recently, um, I mean, none of us have really staffed recently. It's because our last <laughs> weekend has been over a year ago. But just that of the cup of rocks that like we have to pour that out so that we can be filled up with the flowing water of the Holy Spirit and then overflowing like that's the visual I was getting when you were speaking and yeah um, that's yeah that's really powerful do you have a, a point on the weekend where you remember like that was your like breakthrough well I was really stuck in sadness I think for a lot of different things and I think letting some of that go was finally when you know, I was able to break through and mm -hmm. I think I had some walls up for some of the other things that we did. Um, but, and my big surprise was anger. Like I didn't know I was angry because <laughs> I tend to turn it inward and it becomes sadness, but um, that was a big surprise. So, but I think sadness really helped me to empty out like all of the sadness that I was carrying. So mm -hmm. that was probably the moment I think that that I remember the most. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just love that we could continue. It wasn't, the weekend wasn't going to just end, you know, cause that would have been really sad. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. Like, what do you do now? You know, but, um, so the fact that we could go on to other things is just wonderful. So. 
That is definitely the one thing that's so different about women's walk is that it doesn't end, you know, like yeah. I'm sure we've all been on other retreats and it's Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and off you go. And then you're like, Oh, that's not for another year. Great. Hmm. Now what do I do? <laughs> you know, yeah. at yeah. least now you have this group of women, you know, that have experienced the same thing. And so that is probably one of the greatest things that I love about women's walk. Cause that it, it, it continues. Yeah. To this, I mean, from 2012 until 2021, like it's still going, yeah. you know, <laughs> and beyond. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> and we still have work every couple of weeks. <laughs> work I've learned. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I thought there'd be this miraculous age where it'd be like, "Ooh, I have no more work." No. <laughs> Yeah, Doesn't I know. Work. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and really work can sometimes be joyful and celebratory. Yeah. So even if everything is perfect and great, you still have work to celebrate the great, you know? That's true. Yeah. And I've had plenty of that too. So that's been good. So yeah, that's always beautiful to share too with our sisters, you know, it's the, the joy it doesn't have to always yeah. be grudging me work. <laughs> okay, you can Easy that. to find the bad work, the hard work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but then it's also <laughs> easy sometimes to just say, oh, I'm just happy. So we'll just do so you can use it as a crap. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I admit that that is one of my <laughs> problems. I've done it too. <laughs> yeah. Like it's easier to just be grateful than to actually look at the work sometimes yeah Yeah. but that's why in your circle I know that you keep each other accountable because Janet knows you so well that if you say "Hmm, I'm good she's gonna call you out and be like really because last Friday night at dinner you were telling me all this other stuff (laughs) oh she's done that (laughs) I think I've done it too yes she has done that I've done that accountability it, yeah, it's a good thing. It is. It is because we all need to do work sometimes. You have to because we're <laughs> we're walking with each other, right? So we have to pull each other along and drag them, drag us kicking and screaming, <laughs> right? <It's true. laughs> Can we add yeah. that to the mission of the ministry: walking yeah. and dragging women <laughs> transformation in Christ? <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Sometimes you have to drag people. You just do. Fear. It is. It's because of yes. fear. You know, it's like, man, I've been yeah. carrying this for so long. If I don't carry it anymore, who am I without it? You know, yeah. so I got to keep it and I'll just drag it behind me forever. <laughs> well, that's not healing, right? It's like, you're. No. nobody wants to carry those wounds forever. My gosh, that's yeah. so, ugh, it's tiring. So now we will move into one of our favorite sections of the show called our the fun part. <laughs> it's yeah, all been it fun. <laughs> our fun. funny fuel for Fridays. And so I've mentioned this on the show before, but our show drops on YouTube and on Facebook on Thursdays. And so some of you have told us that you watch on Fridays or sometime during the weekend. And so we'd like to give you some funny things or some fun things to go into your Friday with. Um, And so let's get started with your fuff, 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 fuzz. So (laughs) what is your favorite meal? It can be breakfast, lunch, dinner, restaurant, homemade, you decide. Well, I would say dinner. And I think you know what it is, Kim. (laughs) I will chili rellenos, but they have to be good chili rellenos, crispy. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes you go places and they're not so good. But if my friend would make them for me more, <laughs> he Mark makes Rick. the best. Mark just Rick. so you know, I don't she think she was best. talking about this friend. <laughs> I yeah. bet you're a wonderful cook. I... But Kim makes great chili rellenos and green chili, but. If I have to go to a restaurant, I will. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever made chili rellenos before. No? I've never tried because, you know, I just don't think I could do it. Because you have Kim. <laughs> she doesn't deliver, though, so 
<laughs> no Grubhub at this hour. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> but no, that it would be Mexican food and it would be chili rellenos for sure. Mm. What I love. Now I'm craving them. <laughs> I know. Dang it. <laughs> I remember we shared one of your recipes um, on the Christmas vlog when we were sharing recipes. Oh, yeah. Uh, you shared a breakfast recipe. I think it was like French toast casserole or something. Yeah. yeah. With you I up until the point where you said, put fruit on top, and then you lost Kim. <laughs> Who does that? Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Somebody what? said that. It wasn't me, Kim. It wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> it's even on your recipe. <laughs> Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Put some. Oh, I didn't realize that because we never do strawberries and some <laughs> blueberries on top. <laughs> when I make it for my kids, we never put fruit on it, so I don't know why that says that. <laughs> well, we don't, I'm gonna so. edit it out of the recipe book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do that. Unnecessary. <laughs> no fruit allowed. <laughs> okay what is your favorite movie well it depends on if we're talking fun and funny or <laughs> religious you know but fun and fun. The funniest movie. I love bridesmaids it just cracks me up like the movie bridesmaids it's oh. just one of my favorites and I could watch it like all the time I don't know why I just think it's funny really Kristen Wiig is funny. Yes, you don't think it's funny? Maybe I have to watch it a third time. <laughs> I have the unedited version. <laughs> I've Whoa. tried this. Everybody tells me that. They're like, it's so funny. And I'm like, did I, did I not watch the right movie? <laughs> this was hard to pick, though, because I have a lot of favorites. But um, The Shack would be my, my God movie. So That's I just love that, how he just, you know, Know, spends time with them with God and Jesus and um, the Holy Spirit and it's just so beautiful and of course it makes you cry but <laughs> it gives you such hope too so that's a beautiful movie yeah, yeah it is I didn't read the book but I understand it's pretty close it's a short read Kim you should read it why Come I on, have give it a try I have the movie <laughs> give it a try <laughs> I Kim think I actually well. read the whole book for the second time. I read it twice. And I think I read the whole thing on my flight back from Austria the second time we went, when we just went like four years ago. Um, I read it in like the flight. I mean, it's a long flight, but it's a it's an easy read. And when yeah. I read the book, I envisioned some of the stuff differently than the way the movie portrayed it. Like, I was a little disappointed in the movie scene where um, there's, like, lights shooting out of people. And, like, he sees, and I don't want to ruin it, but he sees a certain character um, and, like, all of the lights shooting out of him. Like, when I read it in the book, it was just, like, I saw tons of lights and tons of color and then the movie, I mean, it was okay, but it just wasn't as big as it was in my imagination. So there's good parts to the book yeah. that aren't in the movie. Yeah, there are. Yeah, it's good. I love it. And I even have it if you'd like to borrow it. I have two of them. <laughs> I bought it for me. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> well, that is your reading assignment for next week to read it. <laughs> yes. There'll be a quiz. I will fail because I don't read. No, I do not. I know how to read. I don't have time. A, B, C, D. <laughs> no, it's just when I start to read, then I my mind wanders and then I fall asleep. Nine times out of ten, I'm sound asleep. Because I no. Next question. <laughs> What is the best or most fun thing you've done during the pandemic? Well, we had a lot of time with our kids, like in the beginning when everybody was home. And um, so it was fun just kind of getting to slow down and take some time with the kids. But one of the funnest things we did a couple of times, um, I don't know if you know the show Chopped, where they 
get a basket of ingredients and have to make stuff. So Sarah and Grace wanted to do it. So two or three times, Larry and I would get like a bowl of stuff and just throw, you know, different ingredients. And then they had to come up with something and, and it was just really fun. And they still talk about, you know, let's do that again. And they're pretty creative really. So, so that was kind of fun. It is a great idea. Yeah, it was fun. So. And I know Alyssa's a great cook. I don't didn't know Sarah. Sarah cooks. She's starting to learn a little bit. So yeah. yeah. Some of their things were interesting. It was like, oh, I have to taste this now. <laughs> and we'd have to judge it and stuff. And I don't remember what we gave them. I think we gave them some money or something <laughs> for whoever won, but um it was fun. That's and it was their idea. idea. So yeah. You get creative when you're stuck at home and can't do anything. So that is awesome. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, I know. Kind of fun. <laughs> awesome. So um, our last fa 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 fa, and then you're going to tell us about your favorite concert experience. Um, oh. <laughs> but your fa 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 of if you could have any job, if money were no object, um, if you could have any job in the world, what would be your dream job? Well, this might sound lame, but it would be a PE teacher. I've always wanted to do that. I don't know why. I just, oh, not lame. I, just think, I just think it'd be fun. Of course, there'd be no money in it, which you said no object. Money's no object. So <laughs> no, that was just always something I wanted to do. Yeah, I just thought it'd be fun. But it would depend on the age. I'm not sure I'd want to do middle school or high school because they're more sweaty. <laughs> and sassy. They might give you a bunch of sass. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a gym teacher. So, what? Something you didn't know about me, Kim. <laughs> that is interesting. Now I'm picturing you in those funky, hideous coat shorts <laughs> with jute socks <laughs> and a whistle. And a whistle. Yeah, That's a whistle. whistle. And a whistle. <laughs> Maybe a visor, too. I don't know. <laughs> and some sunglasses. <laughs> It's a great visual, isn't it? <laughs> no. We need a graphic of that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> let's not have a visual of that. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's move on. <laughs> so what has been your favorite concert experience? And if I wasn't there, I will allow it because this is your time to share. So whatever well, your favorite. You. <laughs> and if thank I you were allowing there, that. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no we've had some great times some great concerts and boy do I miss those I hope they start coming back um Same. another way of praising God and praying through it you know just I love it so I would have to say Margaret and you were there and you got the tickets <laughs> Toby Mack at Fiddler's Green when we were like what five rows back and all oh. the confetti we were in the confetti zone yep <laughs> you saved some <laughs> He was remember like, that to me the entire time we were there. Yeah, I remember. No, and he was so close we could touch him. I mean, it was awesome. Oh, we were really. That close. has to be the best one. That was what a year or two ago. So yeah, is that when he came with Torn Wells? What's with him too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, oh. there was a bunch of different bands, and remember he was late. They had he had a delay or yeah, he I almost didn't make it to the concert, and then he came. He didn't play him. long enough. That's for sure. Yeah, we only An got hour, him for like 45 maybe. minutes, but it was... But we uh, got confetti. Amazing. We did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the best. Being that close, that was awesome. I don't think I've ever been that close, so... No, that and was... The, awesome. for the confetti stuff was great. Yeah. Do you still have that piece of confetti, Margaret? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> you have a little shrine in your house? <laughs> I just have it. Oh, I yeah, think shrine. it... <laughs> oh, that was awesome you're right we were in the confetti zone <laughs> it was, awesome. it was. It was your favorite great. concert memory mine man there have been so many I have to say probably when we went and saw King and Country and they came yeah. down on that ship oh that was cool <laughs> was amazing I was like we are yeah. literally in the Coliseum like it's not a fantastic venue and they're on a yeah. ship 
<laughs> and that was one yeah. of the last concerts we went to before COVID. Yes. Yeah, it was. I have to say that was probably tops. Toby Mac and then King and Country. That was phenomenal. And that King and Country, when they would bang on the drum, I'm like, I need to get me a drum. <laughs> right? Just beat the crap out of it. Good. So good. I just loved how they were banging on that drum. You know, it was just awesome. How about you, Margaret? What was yours? Well, probably the first time we ever saw Toby Mac. I remember we were sitting off to the side, but he just puts on just the most amazing show that I just, I was just like, blown away by the lights and the sound and the performance and that he does that like night after night after night like he gave it 110 percent and so I was just that was probably that was several years ago and maybe one of our first concerts but that Mm -hmm. was definitely one of the tops but non-Toby because I think we all have our favorite Toby concerts but um (laughs) I remember a couple years ago we, we did Red Rocks and we were in like the eighth row and it was Jesus Culture was one of the headliners. Um, and my church band was there. Red Rocks was there. And there was a couple other bands. But I just remember having a really Holy Spirit moment when Jesus Culture was playing. And just Red Rock is just the, one of the best yeah. concert venues ever. Yes. Um, and just being with you gals and just being in the holiness of that place and just worshiping and that that's definitely one of my favorites I remember yeah, that, that was a good one. when you looked up and everybody's light they had their flashlights on that was probably yeah. one of the most beautiful things to see and I say everybody's mm-hmm. just worshiping and it's like man, you, that is probably one of the greatest feelings you know you're just like it overcome is. with the Holy Spirit goosebumps you know? yeah <laughs> all over the place (laughs) right? it is and to see the young people I think that's probably one of the things I love too is to go and see the young people worshiping and singing and it's like man that's our future you know that those are the ones we need to be feeding into like man we gotta but yeah we do have some great concerts don't we (laughs) We yeah we do great memories that's for sure (laughs) yeah but this is a good segue (laughs) into our next question for you um, we did this last time on the show and it worked well, so we're going to do it again. Um, do you, Janet, have a G walking, a God on the ground moment that you would like to share on the show this week? Oh, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> no, um, we're catching you off guard. <laughs> you are. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but it's, um, wow. Hard to pinpoint one. I think, uh, one was that my little granddaughter, Emma, she just turned six yesterday. Um, Kayla had told me that she was walking around the house sing, um, singing, um, Mary, did you know? And I wasn't there to witness it, but Kayla told me how beautiful it was. But it went something like, Mary, did you know you had a baby or, <laughs> or something? She didn't know quite the words. But Kayla's like, I have no idea why she's singing this because that's like for Christmas mostly this was like a week or two ago and just um, hearing that she was singing about Mary and I told Kayla, I go, Mary must be on her heart, you know, and she, she has such a beautiful little spirit about her. And to see that in my grandkids is the other two are kind of small, but, um, but Emma talking about Jesus and, you know, she just loves Jesus and, and it's just beautiful to, to witness that. So so God is in the children, you know, and it's like you said, it's our future and, and that's all that I want for my kids and grandkids is to know Jesus. Like that's, that's my, my wish for all of them. Well, it's my wish for everyone in the world, obviously, but um, for my kids and grandkids, just that they would know him and that they would come to rely on him like I have, because it's all you have sometimes, you know, so so That's you it. get to be their God on the ground. Hopefully. Yeah. You do. Hopefully I, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, they're a gift. example for them, you know? <clears throat> yeah. And to see it so generational in your family. I mean, like you raised your daughter yeah. in the faith and now your daughter is raising her daughter in the faith. Yeah. And like someday Emma's might have a daughter and she might yeah. be <laughs> like, that's just so beautiful. And yeah. Emma's just so sweet. 
<laughs> she is. She is. Yeah, she's a sweetie. So I can't believe she's six. I can't either. <laughs> I, I have I'm no getting old yet. time. <laughs> I know. I think you met me when Sarah was six or something. Yeah, I have a picture of her little. Like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Now she's a teenager with an attitude. So <laughs> hmm. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine where she got that. Problem. I know. <laughs> and speaking of the future generations, I maybe we can make a prediction on how many grandchildren you think that you might have someday. Because you only have three so far, but you have seven children, don't you? So I you want twelve of grandchildren. <laughs> I keep you telling them I just need a dozen. That's all I need. You know, I that's not asking a lot. <laughs> Twelve. That's a low. That's a low number. <laughs> I'll take as many as I can get. So. So when we're watching the archives of the vlog in forty years, <laughs> I we'll my guess I have. my guess is going to be seventeen. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> There's a few kids that have to get out of school first. <laughs> I was say, have you met Janet's kids? That's a lot of kids. <laughs> I've met some of them. I still have a few young ones, so hopefully. Yeah. Let's see. That's hopefully not 17 in four years. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with, I think you're going to have seven. Okay. Seven's a great number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she already has three. I'm like calculating the kids. <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> we shall see. I'll take whatever I can get. So. In 40 years, we'll see who's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. thank you so much for coming on the show. And you have yeah. been one of our so biggest supporters from the very beginning of the vlog. And we're just so thankful. And uh, I really enjoyed seeing you and getting to know you a little bit better. And we just thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I love your show. It makes me laugh. It makes me cry. I love it. And I love both of you. And you know that. So, <laughs> Well, I am very, very thankful, one, that you said yes to be on our show. And two, that you listened to God and came on a Women's Walk weekend. <laughs> yes, me too. And three, that you constantly fill my cup. And you Thank always you. reach out to me just when I need it. It seems like you just always know when to reach out to me. And I love our laughs and I love hanging out with you and your family and your hubby. And so yes. I am incredibly blessed by you. And I know many of our viewers are as well. So thank well, you. I'm blessed being by you. both of you too. So <laughs> thank you both. We love you, Janet. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 A gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got from what she said. <laughs> I'm still trying to picture it. <laughs> I knew that was going to be fun just because we have had so many good times together. And Janet is one of, I mean, you more than me, but she's one of my women's walk friends that I see outside of women's walk events or circles or weekends and you know, we do a lot of fun stuff together, um, or we did before COVID. Um, <laughs> so, and I know we're going to get back to that. Um, we so we have lots of uh, little inside jokes with her and just memories and stories. And so I, I knew that was going to be fun. And it was. <laughs> it was. And I'll tell you, people always think that we spend this ungodly amount of time to get, we really don't. Like we see each other when we see each other on concerts or on the weekends. And occasionally we get together, but it's so hard, you know, lives are so, well, like she has seven kids. She's pretty busy, but it, it, yeah, she's that handful of people that outside of women's walk weekends that I spend some time with and I, I, I love it. I just, she fills my cup a lot. Yeah. So she is a gift. That's for she sure. Beautiful soul. She is. <laughs> so now moving on to the next part of our show, our faithful fuel for Fridays. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> um, today's verse, uh, I'm going to be reading it out of the message version. Um, so our verse today is John 14, and I'm going to read 25 through 27. Uh, and so this is kind of setting the scene a little bit. This is just before... 
um, Jesus is about to get arrested. And so he's kind of giving the disciples, I think he's speaking to the disciples and giving him kind of a, a warning and a, like a preparing their hearts for what's to come. And so he says, uh, I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you, the friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send at my request will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you are used to being left, feeling abandoned and bereft. Don't, so don't be upset. Don't be distraught. Mm. I love that. So I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. And it says, I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything that I've told you. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to imagine that back in Jesus's day, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had Jesus, but when they weren't with Jesus, they didn't yet have the Holy Spirit. And so just this promise of I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. So even though I'm leaving you on this earth, that I'm not really leaving you. I'm, I mean, you know, my gift to you, my parting gift to you is the Holy Spirit. So um, that's just a beautiful picture of, of such a beautiful gift. That's a pretty good gift. <laughs> a huge gift that they didn't even realize like if you keep reading in through the chapter it talks about how they're like but where are you going we don't know where you're going and we and so he's just giving them these little bits and pieces because they haven't they've had him you know and now you're going to be gone who's going to lead us and who are we going to follow and I love that how they kept questioning him in that part too when I was reading the rest of it and I was like so even they questioned you know and they knew him in person like they actually got to walk with them and spend those years with them. And so they questioned them. So it's okay sometimes if we question, but that's why we have the Holy Spirit too, so that we can go to them with the questions and he can answer those for us. And if we just listen, man, he is speaking all the time. And it's just us pausing to do that. Yeah. And I think like he was probably trying to comfort them because they were probably terrified. You know, they've been serving with Jesus and walking with Jesus for, you know, every single day of their lives. It's not like, Oh, I'll see you Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, you know, maybe we won't see each other and we'll pick it up again on Monday. Like they lived with him like 24 seven. And so for him to say, I am leaving you, like, I can't imagine how scary that would feel. And, and we haven't had enough time, Jesus, like, what do you mean you're leaving? There's so much more to do, you know, like, so I, and thinking they weren't ready, you know, we're not ready. We're, how are we going to do the work that you're doing? Like you're Jesus, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, there's this fear. There's a ton. I mean, can you imagine all of a sudden this constant in your life and then all of a sudden it's gone? Yeah. I, I can't even imagine what they were going through. Yeah. But I think that's a good reminder for kind of like what Janet was saying that he never leaves. He's always been there. And that's why they, he sent the Holy Spirit so that it's always with us, all mm-hmm. around us even in the wind or in the birds chirping or whatever that is, you can always find the Holy Spirit somewhere Yeah, in yourself. Yeah. You know, I always used to say, Oh, I'm not wise. What? I don't hear. What do people hear? Who do you hear? But man, if you pause for just a few minutes, it's amazing what he says to you. Trust Mm -hmm. me. Sometimes I'll say something. I'm like, who just said that? Where'd that come from? And then when you're bold enough and brave enough to then say it to someone else and speak life into someone else's life, then yeah, you're wise because Jesus gave you the wisdom himself. And that's what he wants us to do. And that's why we speak life. We're here to speak life into each other, you know, because for me, the outside world is not as kind. (laughs) You know, and so I think it's especially with women's walk and I try to bleed it into my personal life as well, but I want to try to speak life to as many people as I can, you know, Thank because you. that's what I needed so much in my life. Mm-hmm. And so if I can give anybody the smallest bit of wisdom or joy or whatever that looks like, 
that's the gift that he gave me. And it's, you can't sh- hide those things. That's why he gave them to us is to share. So uh, I love that verse. <laughs> so as we prepare for Easter coming up, we think um, the next time we are together, uh, we will do a special Easter show and kind of reflect on uh, this Lenten season and uh, preparing our hearts and our minds for Good Friday and for Easter when we realize the tomb is empty and he is risen. So definitely join us again in two weeks uh, when we reflect on Easter. Yeah, so it'll probably be a little more kind of like the Christmas show where it's just Margaret and I, but we're just going to try to share as much as we can and get ourselves prepared for the resurrection and what that looks like in our lives. And so we're excited to be able to share that with all of you and, and hope that you can take the 30, 40 minutes to spend with us before and prepare you for um, all the gifts that he's about to give us. So we're excited. (laughs) Yeah. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And we hope that you uh, were able to uh, gain as much from Janet as we did. And that um, this, this little hour was uh, something that spoke life into your day today. Um, And just, we thank you for your support and watching Uh, And we'll see you again soon. Bless you all. Have a great couple of weeks. Bless you.